wrestling fans, and welcome to another edition of NBC's 10 Count. I'm C Fall. On today's episode, though, I'm talking to AEW's Lance Archer. How you doing today? What's up, man? Oh, God. The world is spinning around, and we need <laughs> you to answer some questions. First off, <laughs> Okay. How did you get into wrestling? I think people always want to start from the beginning. So was it channel surfing, a family, friend? Who was it? it you know, for me, you know, a lot of guys and girls, they, they get into wrestling when they're little, little bitty, when they're little kids, and they, they love wrestling their whole life. I didn't really actually start watching wrestling, pro wrestling, uh, until probably my sophomore year in high school. But I was really focused on playing football, American football. And, um, you know, that was where my focus was, but I became a huge fan of the business. You know, every Monday night, especially when the Monday Night Wars were happening, WCW, WCW Nitro and WWF at the time, you know, and the going back and forth and Sting when he took on the Crow persona and the NWO and DX and all that stuff, man. I mean, that's when I kind of fell in love with pro wrestling as a fan, uh, because I think everybody has to fall in love with pro wrestling as a fan before you actually get into the business. Um, And then it wasn't until college and my football days had kind of come to an end um and I was working in a nightclub in Austin Texas and the guy that owned the nightclub knew a guy that started a wrestling school and you know kind of introduced me and I went through a tryout which was the most painful thing I'd ever done <laughs> um you know and I played sports football baseball and basketball you know for my uh, entire childhood life um and again this was the most painful thing i'd ever done I actually tried to bow out of it and gave like a bad excuse like i couldn't afford the school and then the guy was like well how much can you pay and I was like, yeah, 200 bucks a month and he went good come on down and i was like damn it all right, all right I guess I'm you should have said 50 dollars a month and you would have been said <laughs> probably probably but you know what he was charging 200 bucks was nothing i think it was like 1200 bucks a month or something like that right. and i said 200 thinking he'd go oh heck no but he was like all right <laughs> well that uh, he you could have got a better deal and you but you got a great deal out of that you mentioned the monday night wars currently yep. this aew wwe fan base uh, is trying to like i think rekindle those emotions of will this person go here will this person go there they're battling over ratings they're battling over who's the best do you right. is that feeling still coming out of aew wrestlers or even wrestlers you talk to in different organizations like this is the new monday night wars well i mean i think the way the world exists today it's a whole new era you know wcw and wwf back then it literally was just tv you had two channels and if you had a vcr in two different rooms you could record them <laughs> and that's that's aging me a little bit there no, um, I, you know that was, that, that was the only way you, you had to actually channel surf you had to go back and forth you know if you wanted to watch both and stuff but now you know with youtube and and all the different streaming platforms and things like that um, you know, in, in social media, I mean, it's instantaneous, you know, results, you know, what's going on, you see video clips of wrestlers, guys and girls who in the past would have never been seen before, are now seen worldwide and are being discovered daily because of social media, because of Twitter, because of Instagram and things like that. Um, you know, whereas in the past, you really just had to know somebody and you had to send in a tape or a DVD or whatever the case may be at the time, you know, and hope that somebody took a look at it but now like i said everything's instantaneous so the 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 wars between the fans uh, i think is raging strong and it's a good thing you know um i think it's fun and they should enjoy all of the products but at the same time i think it's fun you know it's like having a sports team you know if you're i live in dallas i'm not a dallas cowboys fan i'm actually a, a, an la chargers fan uh, but, you know, of course, if you're a Cowboys fan, you're constantly talking about the Cowboys and what team you're playing against and things like that. Um, and I think that's kind of where the rivalry exists between fans. It's like they're big AEW fans, they're big WWE fans, they're big whatever independent company, they're, they're really sports fans. But I think it drives the business as a whole, which makes it a lot of fun for everyone. Us as the wrestlers, the fans, the, the guys that are running the companies and are making the money, you know, I think, I think it's good for the wrestling business as a whole. Of course, more places to work for more wrestlers to be exposed. That you you brought up, you know, faces you wouldn't see. You know, AEW Dark, I think, is a perfect example of a platform that allows, you know, the stars, uh, for instance, like yourself, taking on someone that maybe not be so familiar with, but suddenly someone sees that person, they click on their Twitter, they go down the rabbit hole and discover all of their matches, and suddenly everyone's like, "Wait, we want them signed. We want them signed." And it's happened. Yeah. We've seen it happen with many AEW wrestlers on Dark eventually getting signed to Dynamite. So 
it's a it's a great time for the wrestling business and especially for May 29th because the AEW double or nothing is coming to Nevada and the world champion hangman page a man that you have battled with over the championship is defending against CM Punk let's put on our prediction cap for a second who's gonna win hangman page or CM Punk don't care I just want to beat them both up so <laughs> Uh, you know, I've actually I've stepped in the ring with Hangman several times, you know, most recently in our Texas death match. Um, we fought several times in Japan, whether it be tag matches or things like that. Um, you know, and then CM Punk, I've, this is the second time I've worked in a company with him, um, but I've never actually had a chance to step in the ring with him. Um, he claims to be the best in the world, and I'd like to test that. Uh, I think you can't take anything away from Hangman Page because he went to war. I think a more bloody war than he's gone to war with anybody. I mean, he's had some amazing matches from the hour long battle that he had with uh, Brian Danielson, uh, you know, to the, the classics that he had with Cole. And, you know, now he's going to go into a, a match with CM Punk again, self-proclaimed best in the world. Um, and it's one of those things like I think it's going to draw a lot of attention. But for me personally, I don't care. I just want to beat them both up. I just want to beat them both up. Now, I feel like you are always hidden behind some glass. And every time AEW needs you, they take out the hammer. And in case of emergency, <laughs> they smash it and bring you in. Do you feel like that's the case? You know what? I'm, 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 that, I'm that, that cool specialty item, you know, that cool toy that you put up in there and you, you look at it. And you go, <laughs> don't touch it. That's don't one of my favorites, but I save it for the right time. So that that's what I am. I'm that. I'm that monster that you put in the in the box, and then when you need the monster to come out and destroy some stuff, you bring him out. But you can't keep him out too long because he'll just destroy everything and everybody. But he's your favorite, always. So you put him back up in that glass box. You look at him, you, you enjoy him, and you go, okay, that's, that's scary, but I, I like it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, when I told people I was interviewing you, they were all like, he scares me. And I was ah, like, well, good. that's a good thing. That's a, yeah. I guess that's what he wants you to uh, uh, feel. But – Currently with on the card of Double or Nothing, you're not on it right now. Is that, is that a disappointment to you? No, it's the wrestling, man. That's just how things are. We have an amazingly stacked roster. So sometimes you're part of it, sometimes you're not. Guess what? Doesn't mean I might not show up and just kick the crap out of whoever wins that championship match. Just because I'm not written down on the card doesn't mean I'm not going to show up and make, them, make my uh, name be heard. Of course, of course. And I, I really hope that you're going to be on uh, AEW's Forbidden Door. It's on June 26th and AEW versus New Japan. And you've been everywhere. Like, there it is. See, you got it on. So there you go. And there you go. And you've been everywhere. Mm -hmm. But if you had the option to pick an opponent for this Forbidden Door event, who would you right. pick? Man, and that's a crazy thing because, you know, I've, worked with new japan for almost nine years um so to say is there a dream match i don't i pretty much had them all luckily um you know so i don't know if there's anybody specific that i'd like to just have a dream match with because again i've had a chance to work with them um like i said i'm wearing suzuki goon's outfit right now i'm suzuki goon forever you know suzuki goon means uh suzuki's army for the fans that don't understand and know what that means um, we always say that we're Ichiban, which means number one, um, you know, so the possibility of teaming with Suzuki or even more of Suzuki Goon uh, at Forbidden Door, I think that'd be a lot of fun for myself and for the fans, just because it's not something, you know, Suzuki and I got to tag together uh, against Moxley and Eddie Kingston in New York at Arthur Ashe, which was an amazing experience itself. Uh, but at this Forbidden Door, you know, I think it's already sold out close to 15,000 tickets. And I don't think one match has been announced yet. So the fans are clamoring for it. So just to be a part of it, like I said, um, as a group, as Suzuki Goon, I think that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, that Forbidden Door. If anyone else experienced the uh, loveliness on Ticketmaster that morning, uh, it was a, it was like wrestling Lance Archer. You were going to get beat up over and over yes. again. Might stand yes. up for a second and think, oh, I've been knocked down again yeah. but yeah sold out again not one match announced that is incredible no. business you talk about wrestling the wrestling business you can have a great match but if if there's five people there well guess what i don't think you're be making much money but this is bringing home the bank and I, here, 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 I'll, here i'll here i'll throw out a fun uh, possibility dream match because uh, the two guys just fought this last week and brody king fought suzuki uh, uh at uh new japan's capital Punishment, I believe that's what it's called, or yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think Capital Combat, maybe. There yes. you go, Capital Combat yeah. in DC. Um, you know, so they had a battle. So why not uh, Suzuki Goon versus House of Black? That'd be cool. I like it. I like it. Uh, Tony, 
Mr. <laughs> Khan, if you're watching, please uh, make it happen. I, we we don't want to make Lance angry. Well, um, they've already made Suzuki mad, and that's dangerous. You don't want to do that. Uh, there's one more, you know, AW has so many video game platforms and coming out and there's one game that I want and I don't think it's being made. It's you taking people backstage and throwing them through <laughs> the ceiling tiles. And I want it to be levels. You know, the first level is a simple, you know, plastic. Then you got to go through wood Then you got to go through cement and then you got to go through metal. Like, is this something that you can beat somebody up for to get made? <laughs> you know what the fun part about it is, you know, making these video games, I can't even imagine the process that goes into making this. And I know Kenny's been very hands on with it. Um, one of the suggestions that I threw out there, which, I, you know, was more of a tongue in cheek thing. It was a fun thing. Uh, I was like, I didn't really want to be a playable character. I just wanted to be that character where because this is what I envisioned. You know, everybody plays online now and they've got their headsets on and they're yelling and screaming at each other and they're going into that competitive mode with people around the world, right? Um, and you're playing the game and you're about to win the AEW championship and all of a sudden that music hits, everybody dies, starts playing. And it's kind of like the old school Mike Tyson's punch out. There's, there's a way to take me down, but it's almost impossible. And I just come out wreck house and you can't do anything about it i just envision these kids losing their minds when my music plays because they're about to win that championship and all of a sudden everybody dies plays and they're just like no no and i just come out wipe the floor with everybody and leave that would just that would be my fun uh placement in a video game if, you, if i couldn't be a playable character but now I'm, I'm hoping i get to be a playable character I think that's a great idea. I think the reaction, <laughs> the reaction videos on YouTube and on TikTok of people screaming, no, yes. it's him, it's Lance Archer. Just I think mad that, because they know they can't stop it. <laughs> it's, you know, you can't mess with the future. It's, it's a little scary. But uh, recently, though, you also made your debut in MMA on commentary. Is this gonna, <laughs> is this going to be possibly the next step for you in AEW? I have no idea. You know, I, I, back in like 2017, I had a back surgery um, and there was a company in Austin, Texas called Russell Circus. And they were kind enough to let me do commentary while I was in the healing process. And I actually had a lot of fun doing that. Uh, the commentary spot for the MMA company, it's called XKO. It's here in Dallas, Texas. Um, and they run a very high quality company. And the family that runs it used to run pro wrestling it's kind of where i got my start a company called pcw professional championship wrestling in, in arlington texas um and then since they've gotten just strictly into mma xko and i stopped by the show uh, i was one of the weekends i actually had the day to go and watch the show and the event and see the family and talk to everybody and i was ringside and then the guy who's doing commentary is like lance you want to jump on commentary and i was like sure why not i don't know a lot about it. mixed martial arts you obviously can be a fan just by watching the guys fight and uh the fight that i did commentary for was a very long fight of around 37 seconds um and uh <laughs> i think it was, was like 37 lot. minutes i'm like no it is a long fight <laughs> 37 seconds, man. It was hilarious. You know, you know, the, the I think the, the kid who won one with a, a, a submission and it was just it was really quick and it was really good. And um, so it'd be fun to do it more often. I, I don't know if the, the, the fan base can handle my killer commentary. I think so. I, I think, again, in wrestling, when sometimes there's a lifespan for uh, some people with injuries and who knows, sometimes you can't predict what's going to happen. But right. commentary is always open for you. Yeah, we'll see. I hope so. Uh, I'll have to. I'll have to throw. I'll have to throw Ricky out of his spot and take his. It's, it's easy. He's about what? Yeah. He's about like this tall compared to you. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I've known it, Ricky a long time, so you know I'll just walk up, chunk him off the stage, and uh, let him go defend the FTW title, and I'll, I'll take over commentary. Simple. See, we already figured it all out. We already got you he, your next gig. All right. He's easy, easy, man. You can do the Tom Brady gig. You wrestled, and suddenly you're gonna pay you like three hundred million dollars to go talk about wrestling. <laughs> yes, that would that would be much appreciated. <laughs> that contract too, right? The three hundred million. Yes. And, and yes. Tony, 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 I want a Tom Brady commentary uh, contract, please. Oh, I think I just read Lance. Yep, he just got laid off for saying that. Oh, well, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, <laughs> this, this is a just this, this is a scary interview I just produced. Uh, but no, Tony Khan though recently did say, um, <laughs> "Hangman Page is the greatest AEW World Champion." Again, you did take on him in that amazing bloodbath of a match mm -hmm. but we've had other champions we've had jericho we've had moxley we have kenny omega do you believe tony khan's words that hangman page is the greatest aw champion so far 
you know, I mean, he, he owns the company and he runs the company and his word is golden, man. And um, I think every single champion that this company has had from Chris Jericho being the, the inaugural champion to John Moxley to Kenny Omega, who is, you know, the five star match machine. Um, and now you've got Hangman Page, who I think, you know, out of all the names that we've just mentioned, he was the name that was coming into his own. Um, and he's made his name. I think he's fought like he's fought me. Uh, like I said, the matches he had with Brian Danielson to go for an hour with Brian Danielson, uh, that the two matches he had with Cole, including another Texas death match, you can't deny what Hangman Page has done. And I think he's done it. And a lot of people didn't expect it to go the way it's gone. You know, I think there's been several times that he stepped in the ring and they went, okay, this is the time when Brian Danielson wins. Or this is the time when, uh, when Lance Archer wins. Or this is the time when Cole wins, especially the second time they fought. They were like, okay, this is, um, this is absolutely the time that Cole wins. And then he's persevered through every single opponent. And, you know, I think a lot of people are going, well, this is the time that CM Punk wins. And I think there's a good chance that, Adam Page is going to surprise a lot of people. And I think that's why Tony exclaims that he's the greatest champion because he's overcome a lot of people's expectations of what's going to happen in the match they're watching. And um, I think for him, that's an amazing thing because it sets him on a pedestal that again, a lot of people I don't think initially thought it was gonna be for him, um, but I think I guarantee you he believed that. And now he's making believers out of everybody including the guy who owns the company. You make really good points about how the fan base, at least every time Hangman defends his championship, they're like, oh, this is the time he loses. This is the time. This is the time. This is the time. And, and so, again, building up anticipation of will it happen, won't it happen is, is a great um, psychology for wrestling. But Hangman Page, you know, he's been he's been dominating. So we'll, we'll have to Perpetu see what the, the perpetual underdog that's always come over on top. Right. And that's, again, that's a, a simple story to tell, but a great story to tell as well if you do it right yeah. with the right uh, – people and hangman page obviously is that right person for this gig yeah. now i mentioned earlier you have worked for tna new japan wwe AEW. now what yeah. is the difference because everyone knows wrestling and knows wrestling companies but what really is the biggest difference between all of them and the way they present wrestling to an audience uh, <laughs> it's a hard deep uh, question. I understand. It, it, it is a hard deep question. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm coming up on 22 years in the business and I've been blessed in many ways to be a part of major companies for most of my career. Like I said, 2004 signed on with TNA in its infancy, you know, and, and was there when we were just doing the Wednesday night, uh, little pay-per-view events, um, and then transferring over into Orlando and doing impact when it first started uh, from four o'clock in the afternoon on Fox Sports Southwest to Spike TV and, you know, a part of all their first pay-per-views and all that fun stuff. So getting to be a part of all their first was a, a fun experience. Um, you know, my, my short cup of tea in the WWE, you know, I got to actually walk down the ramp at WrestleMania in Arizona. So that's a memory that I'll always have made some lifelong friends there um, you know, Japan is where I spent most of my time, you know, almost nine years going back and forth to Japan. And, you know, I didn't even know that that was going to last that long. You know, it was I had an old school contract with New Japan, like back in the day, they basically was a you came in, you worked your tour and then you went home and there was no like long standing contract. And it wasn't until the more recent years that they started putting Gaijin foreigners under full time contracts. And um, that's kind of what opened the door to for an opportunity for me to work with AEW because AEW came on the scene and took the wrestling world by storm. And I've never seen anything like that. You know, again, I was a part of TNA in its early days, um, but it was, it was building, it was growing. It was, you know, starting from a very small place and moving forward. Um, you know, and the fact that impact wrestling is still here today, I think that says a lot about that company to last the test of time. Um, and it's a great place that I have great friends that are working there now. Um, but to see what AEW was able to do from the get-go, from the announcement. And the announcement was made by the group of guys in Tokyo, Japan, um, you know, because they were there for Wrestle Kingdom uh, on January 4th every year. 
Um, and but like I said, once that announcement was made, it, it took the world by storm. You know, um, the, their first pay per view events, and then on into TV and everything that we've done, even through the pandemic. And now what we're doing, selling out arenas consistently, and you know, double or nothing this weekend uh, uh, in Vegas to the the com combination show with New Japan at the end of June that's sold out with not a card mentioned. I mean, you have to recognize that AEW is consistently doing big things in the business. Uh, we're only growing, getting stronger, getting better. Our roster is as deep and amazing as any roster that can exist in the business of professional wrestling. So you never know what you're gonna get week to week and it's always gonna be top quality. Um, you know, it, it, I think it's been a fun journey for myself to be a part of these new and growing companies, to being a part of established, you know, companies like WWE and New Japan um, and seeing the different styles of business that they run to now being a part of AEW and being able to bring the Murderhawk monster uh, who I created in Japan into the U.S. market. So it's been a crazy fun journey and there's only more to come. Man. Yeah, uh, you've you've done so much, uh, and it's it's just crazy. And but what can fans expect when they attend an AEW event live? Like you mentioned, May 29th, double or nothing in, in Nevada. June 26th, the Forbidden Door. Plus, you have rampages, you have darks, you have dynamite. What's the experience like when a fan attends an AEW event? Um, I, I think the experience is one that you will never forget. Um, like I said, our roster is so amazingly talented and deep and the abilities of everybody that steps in that ring um, is beyond top quality and the action is amazing from the get-go from the opening match to the main event of the night you are going to be out of your seat you're going to lose your voice you're going to remember that experience for the rest of your life and you're going to want to come back and bring your friends and family the next time you go um i, I think it's unlike anything else in the business today um because of what we represent we represent the future and aew has only a bright future ahead of it that is true and so what's your future like my last question is what are your goals for the year for what are my goals for the year? My goals are to get out of that damn glass box and stay on the, uh, the, the, the TV box more often and, and probably and hopefully finally win an AEW championship. You know, they've eluded me in my two and a pl two plus years in AEW, um, but I never give up. I never stop. I never I never quit doing what I do. You know, you're going to get to experience the murder hog monster. I've carried many uh, local champions to the ring and, and put them down. So now it's time to maybe carry one of our champions to the ring and put them down and become a champion myself. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Lance Archer, for being here on NBC's Ten Cow. I greatly appreciate it. And folks, please break open that glass box. Let him lose. Yes. Yes. Smash it to pieces because once yes. he's loose, <laughs> yeah, he's not going back inside that box. Everybody dies. <laughs> oh my, everyone's going to die. Well, folks, <laughs> I've been Steve Fall. He's been Lance Archer. He's going to kill a lot of people, so let's give him what he wants. Thanks for watching NBC's 10 Count. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>